Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. With its powerful engine, all-wheel drive, and balanced chassis, the Focus RS makes an excellent track car right out of the box. Now, if you're serious about tracking your RS, there are a couple upgrades you're going to want to consider. There's one chink in the RS armor. It is definitely temperature. One area is the oil. As the oil gets hot, it's not going to work and lubricate as well, which can damage your engine. So if you're serious about tracking the car, an oil cooler is a must-have. So today we're going to install Mishimoto's oil cooler on our 2016 Focus RS. This oil cooler kit from Mishimoto will fit your 2016 through 2017 Focus RS and includes everything necessary for installation. It includes the cooler assembly itself, braided stainless steel lines, this mounting bracket and baffle, along with a thermostatic oil sandwich plate. Now the way that plate works, the thermostatic switch works that only allows oil to go through the cooler once the car is up to operating temperature. That leaves more oil in the engine for colder starts. Now Mishimoto designed this bracket to not only mount the oil cooler, but it's also an air duct. Working as a package, the oil cooler is going to drop your oil temperature by about 35 degrees, which is a huge change. As a bonus, the design of the air duct drops air inlet temperatures by around 6 degrees. For this installation, with a lift or a jack and jack stands, 3 8 ratchet, 11 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter socket, T30 Torx bit, short extension, torque wrench, 27 millimeter socket, extension, 12 millimeter wrench, dash 10 AN wrench, and a small flat blade screwdriver. Prior to beginning the installation, you want to make sure you grab one quart of full synthetic Motocraft 550. This is an oil pretty specific to the RS, it's not always easy to find. Make sure you grab a quart before you begin the installation. Now the oil cooler is going to mount in front of the radiator. To do the installation, we're going to have to remove our entire front bumper. We'll start the process by removing the headlights. The headlights are going to be held in by two screws, one in the front here and then one further back. Now you want to lift up on the front of the headlight, pop it free, and sort of turn it to remove it. With the headlights out, there's two more Torx screws on either side. Once you remove the headlight, just so you remember, this little clip right here, just pull up on the blue plastic and pop it up over the black. It'll make it easier to remove the bumper later. Next, we're going to move up here to remove these push pins. Now we want to remove the hood release cable, simply pop up on it, move the cable over there. The only left up top here is going to be three more torque screws. All right, now we move down to the wheel wells. Over the wheel well on both sides, we're going to remove two screws and two clips. A screw here and a screw here, then this clip, and the clip that holds the fender to the bumper cover. With that clip removed now, just separate the bumper cover, give it a little tug, pull it away from the fender, and repeat the process on the other side. With the car up in the air, now we're going to move the belly pan. This is held on by some clips on the edges and more torque screws. Before we can remove the bumper cover, there's seven more screws that hold the splitter onto the car. Now 
Now make sure this is fully separated on the sides here. Work your way forward. Then release this harness and put the bumper cover aside. With the bumper off, the top air deflector comes off next. The top piece is out of the way. Now remove the side pieces by removing the torque screw. What we need to do now is actually thread some of these plastic holes to mount the bracket for our oil cooler. Now there's two different sizes. You got two smaller ones on the outside here, two larger ones in the middle. What you want to do is grab the correct hardware. The smaller ones go on the outside. Larger ones are going to go in the middle. And you want to line them up and then basically thread them in to cut grooves in here so we have better mount to mount our bracket. And you want to make sure you have them nice and straight because you are cutting the threads now. Now be careful when you take these screws out, they're going to be quite warm. And line up the bracket as you can see. There's the holes we just opened up, and that's where our bracket's going to fit. But first, we're going to attach the oil cooler to the bracket. Before we install the Mishu motor, you want to take the factory scoop, basically reinstall it using the hardware we took out. All right, now we're back on the table. We're going to assemble the oil cooler with the lines and the bracket so we can go back in the car. What you want to do first is grab this line here that has the 180 on it. That's going to go on the far side. So this is facing the front of the car. There's our bracket. This goes on would be the passenger side. Then this side over here gets a straight fitting. And we're going to bolt the bracket to the cooler with the supplied hardware. I'll we'll snug these down. And we're just about ready to put it back on the car. And the way the bracket works, you have your oil cooler here, but then it also takes the air up to your factory intake here. That includes this plate. If you wanted to limit the air for whatever reason going to your intake, you can actually put this in when you put that bolt in and use it to block it off. In our case, I want as much air as possible going through there, so we're going to leave this off. All right, now, before we're going to start to get the oil lines on, this plastic piece here has to come off. And there's two clips up top. Actually, just pop them off with your fingers or a small screwdriver. And we can feed our oil lines through. And then line up the bracket. Bring the lines basically around the radiator, and then feed them downward. Okay, now we'll line the holes up with the bracket. Get them all started before you snug them down. All right, the next step is back under the car. We have to install the sandwich plate between the filter and the engine itself. So we have to remove the filter. This part's going to be a little bit messy. Just so make sure you have an oil pan to catch the oil. Now what you want to do Clean up the area where the switch plate's going to mount, right where the filter mounts here. You can clean up any oil that may have spilled during the process. Now this spacer goes on top of here and this bolts in place using the provided bolt. Now before you do that though, take a little bit of oil, just put some on the seal itself. And right, now we can grab the bolt and install it. And right, now we're going to put this up into place, make sure the fittings are facing towards driver's side and thread it on. We'll leave it loose so you can still clock it for now. Next we're going to put the fittings onto our sandwich plate. Now you want to grab the line that goes to the passenger side of the oil cooler, the one that had the 180 fitting on it. Bring that up, 
and that's gonna go on the rear fitting on the sandwich plate. We're gonna take the other line to the front fitting. Now, if you are having trouble getting the fittings connected, simply just pull the plate off, bring it down here, tighten up everything, and then carefully put it back in place. And once the fittings are tight, I'm gonna make sure they've got a clear line, not kinked on anything. Then we're gonna tighten this down to 30 foot pounds. And you want to make sure you re-tighten that every time you do an oil change. With everything tight, you can reinstall the filter or install a new one if you're doing an oil change at the same time. All right, now we can reinstall the baffles on the side using the original hardware. So the addition of the oil cooler increases the capacity by a full quart. That's why you want to grab an extra quart of oil. Make sure you have this ahead of time. It is 550 synthetic on the RS. Not a oil you can get just anywhere. Now before we put the pan and bumper cover back on, we're gonna fire it up, just make sure there's no leaks and all our fittings are tight. Everything's good, now we can install our bumper cover. Now we shortened that for the video, but you wanna make sure again, let it get up to operating temperature, check for leaks and stuff like that then. So remember with that thermostatic plate, until it reaches operating temperature, it doesn't open up and circulate through the cooler. Right, the process of installing the cover is the exact opposite of taking it off. Make sure don't forget to reinstall the hood release. Now out the fender wells, just reinstall the clips and the screws. Okay, and reinstall the headlights. Don't forget to plug them back in. I'm gonna repeat the process on the other side and your installation is finished. If you drive your Focus RS hard, the Mishimoto oil cooler is an excellent idea. And if you track this car, this is a must-have installation. Overall, it's not terribly difficult to install. It's a little time-consuming. The large lines are a little cumbersome to work with. But overall, it fits great. It's about two to three hours to install. You'll be back on the road in no time.